All right. Welcome to Greater Life, Greater Impact, everybody. I'm Janet, and I am a quantum healing practitioner, and I love having the opportunity to take people to the uncharted waters of who they really are for spiritual awakening, for healing, so that you can do your inner work and um, develop more self-mastery and more self-awareness. So today we're going to have a hands-on class. We're not going to do a whole lot of talking or teaching or discussing, but we are going to do quite a bit of your own inner work. This is episode, I can't even believe it. This is episode 26 of our sovereignty series. All year this year, we're going to be talking about spiritual sovereignty. And I thought this topic was a perfect fit um, for, for spiritual sovereignty. So our topic for today is freedom from bondage, freedom from the bondage of the pains of your past. So in talking about when I talk to a lot of my clients and I'm working with them one-on-one -on -one in these mentoring sessions that I do, um, oftentimes I will ask people, what is it that you really, really want? And when you get, when you take that down to the to the smallest, most minute, and you break down all the pieces. Because most people will say, I need more money, or I want a new house, or I want a new relationship, or I want a new car, or I want a new something, right? I want this thing. Uh, often when you break that down and you say, why do you want that? And why do you want that? And why would you want that? Uh, it, it will take them almost all the way, always, down to a place of, well, I'm just looking for inner peace. Or I'm just looking for freedom. Or I'm just looking for love. I want to feel love. I want to feel peace. I want to feel good about this situation, finally. I just want to let go and feel okay. I want to feel safe. And so um, often we, what we find is that what is keeping us stuck, what is making us feel unsafe, what is making us feel like we're in bondage, um, Sorry, I've got comments coming in. Um, what's making us feel like we're in bondage is the baggage that we're carrying around of all of the emotion from the pains of the past and the way that we've believed it and bought into it and created beliefs around all of that stuff. And then we just carry it around our necks like this big burden, this big yoke. So bondage has to do with the things that you're clinging to. Katie says, good morning, greater life family. God has brought my awareness to Ephesians 3.16. I'm going to read that. Thank you for sharing it. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith. I thought it was relevant to, just, to today's inner work. Yes. That is really relevant. Thank you so much. Strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith. Well, I think that's the epitome of freedom. When you know that you've got God literally dwelling in your heart, that's freedom. Because then you're not going to be weighed down and bogged down by all of the emotional baggage of whatever's causing pain for you in your life. So bondage has to do with the things that you're clinging to. So I want you to really think about all the things that you are clinging to. And if you haven't done this yet for today's class, you're going to want to get a pen or a pencil and four pieces of paper or a journal, something that you can write in because we are going to be doing our inner work today. We're going to do it, be doing some self-awareness tools and techniques. We're going to be doing some self-mastery by helping you let go energetically of some of the things that are keeping you stuck and weighing you down and keeping you in a prison-like state, okay? So grab a pen and a paper. You're going to want it and need it. Um, if you're watching the replay to this and you feel like you went through this process, but you need to go a little bit deeper and you need more support, you can reach out to me. I will post uh, when this goes to YouTube, I will post my Calendly link down below in the description. And also, I'm going to give you a link so that you can also get what I call a body audit with me. It's a 15-minute process where I 
take you deeply into what is your body saying to you and about you so that you can start letting some of that stuff go. All right. Bondage has to do with the things that you're clinging to and holding on to. So then what is freedom? Freedom is the release of it's the letting go of the things that you're holding on to and clinging to. So I want we I want you to think about what are some of the things that you're holding on to and clinging to that maybe you could release. What are some stories about the pains of the past? What are the emotions around that? What beliefs come up for you? What insecurities might be feeding into that? What maybe even possessions? You know, often I, I like to watch that show Hoarders because <laughs> it just boggles my mind sometimes that people can accumulate so many possessions and have them, you know, piling in around themselves in order to feel safe or, or whatever it is that they're feeling in order to numb those feelings. So removing that feeling of bondage that you're in or stuckness that you're in or sickness that you're in really has a lot to do with letting go of what's coming up around that. So the effects of your memories from the pains of the past and the dramas and the traumas, the effects of the memories, where are you storing that in your physical body? Letting go of the need to control everything, letting go of the need to brute force your way through it instead of holding space and grace for yourself, letting go of the need to control. And sometimes letting go of possessions. You know, I find it's a really great exercise, a healing exercise to walk around your house from time to time and just go, you know what? That really doesn't resonate with me anymore. I'm going to donate that to somebody so that somebody else can get the benefit of it. Whether it's clothing, whether it's an accumulation of too many possessions, so that's what healing has to do. That's what lies at the core of healing and um, freedom. So if you're looking for freedom in your life, more freedom, then you have to kind of identify what do I need to let go of? Is it possessions? Is it, um, you know, unhealthy attachments in relationship? Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to throw all your relationships away and all your, your the, the ways that you interact with people. It doesn't mean that, but sometimes it can mean taking a deeper look at what am I clinging to within the relationship. <clears throat> so I want you guys to take your first piece of paper out, get that first piece of paper out. And um, so typically when we feel like we're in bondage or we're stuck somewhere in our lives, it's it can almost always be traced back to these three general areas. And the first area is relationships. So I want you to um, I want you to devote one page just for relationships. And so re write relationships at the top of that one page. The second thing is your physical body and or traumas. So your, your physical body, meaning, do you have any symptoms? Do you have any problems? Do you have any pains? Do you have any sickness? Do you have the effects of trauma going on in your physical body? So I want you to devote a second page to trauma slash body or symptoms. Okay. So this is, this has everything to do with how is your body not, how are the cells in your body not getting along? The third page I want you to devote completely and entirely to dreams and passion, your dreams, your passion, your purpose How about that. We'll just call it that dreams, passion, purpose. So often when we feel stuck in our lives, it's, it's usually going to be able to be traced back to either one or all of these areas. It's probably going to show up in every one of these areas. And so um, we can trigger the gunk that you're holding on to, the gunk that you're clinging to that's creating bondage by going to any one of these three areas. Usually we can find it in your body somewhere. 
We can almost always find it in relationships and we can almost always find it bubbling up in what's preventing you from living your purpose and your passion. That's where there will, that's where the bondage will show up. And the bondage really is just a yoke or a burden of emotions and beliefs that aren't serving you. They're not in alignment with who you are. So let's, let's talk about relationships just for a minute. So if we apply this to relationships, you might be looking at how did I allow myself to, to go along, to get along in this relationship for so long without standing up for myself or without speaking my truth? How did I allow myself to be controlled or micromanaged or, um, or to placate to the expectations of other people? projecting onto me their will, their desires, what, how they want you to show up. But maybe that's not in alignment with who you are. And so now there's this massive disconnect from who you are. How did I allow that? Maybe people in your life have humiliated you or harmed you or wronged you or cursed you or, or spoke evil against you or about you. Maybe they diminished you. Maybe they um, maybe they caused you to second guess yourself to the degree that you lost touch with who you really are over the years because you kept questioning yourself over and over and over and you didn't stand up for yourself. You gave in to get along. You agreed with their narrative that they were putting upon you. And this happens a lot with children. Because oftentimes parents will put onto their children what they expect. I expect you to get straight A's, go to college, get an education, become a doctor, blah, 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 all the things. I expect this of you to plug into society and become an upstanding supporter of the societal norms. And I expect you to conform to family, to parental expectations and rules. And, and I expect this outcome to be of you. And sometimes what happens in an unhealthy way is that as parents, we project a little too much onto our children and we forget to give them the freedom to actually become who they really are. So there's, there's a balance, right? There, there has to be a healthy balance with some of that somewhere. Because at some point, if there's too much projecting going on, there's too much manipulation and control, or sometimes the control can be covert, like you're just being manipulated by guilting and shaming. <laughs> so if there's a lot of that that goes on as you're growing up or even in your uh, romantic relationships or sibling relationships, Sometimes what will happen is you'll lose yourself. You'll kind of become dissociated with who you really are. So the awakening process then, what that does for a human being is it allows you to become a little bit more sovereign. And this is why I think spiritual sovereignty is so vital and it's so important is that as you become a little bit more sovereign, you start putting your foot down and you start saying things like, no. That's not who I am. That doesn't work for me. That doesn't align with me. I'm sorry. That doesn't work for me. It's not, it's not in alignment with who I am and who I'm becoming. Um, when a person starts going down the road of spiritual awakening and developing spiritual sovereignty, what they start doing is they start honoring the inward nature or the inward calling that whispering that inner voice of who they really are what's going on inside of me and you start honoring that inner voice and you start acknowledging that inner voice as you begin to awaken to the fact there is an actual being in here that wants to govern your life rather than be governed by an external voice that isn't you. 
So as you spiritually awaken, you start to realize you're more conscious, you're more aware, you're more self-driven, you're more willing to be led and governed by your heart rather than your head. You start exercising free will in a much more bold way and you step outside of paradigms because your heart is telling you to. So as we do this, we start bumping up against the resistance. And some of the resistance is coming from the pains of your past, the echoes from the beliefs that you picked up as a child, the beliefs or emotions that you picked up and carried in any given relationship that didn't serve you very well, that took you away from who you really are. And so as you begin to start cleansing this stuff out of your physical body and purging that, you literally are in a way, you know, as you start to release all that baggage, you literally are sanctifying, purifying uh, yourself. This is repentance. This is the epitome of repentance because not one of us is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven carrying around all of the I'm not good enoughs. I'm not enough. I'm not safe. I'm not lovable. I'm not loved. I'm not worthy. I'm not special. I don't matter. I'm not seen. I'm not heard. When you carry around that gunk, it keeps you a bondage. It keeps you in bondage or a prisoner to all the reasons why you're stuck in life and you can't move forward and you don't feel inner peace and you don't feel freedom to come and go as you please and do the things that you know you were put here to do. It's not just about having your way and getting what you want all the time. It's about honoring the truth of what's going on inside of you to the degree that you follow your truth, your purpose, your passion, and you don't let anybody else step on that or step on you in the process of pursuing what you came here to get done or what you came here to give, actually. So this is a process of cleansing and purifying. Anne says, so much of this happened in our childhood. We were told not to speak our truths or that we might hurt someone's feelings. Agreed. Yeah. So much of it happens in our childhood. And so as we, as we embark on these exercises that I'm going to take you through, I want you to be thinking about some of the relationships in your life that may have, um, done some of that, stepped on your free will and your personal power and your inner sovereignty. Not that people mean to do that. Not everybody means to do that. We, we often do it as parents inadvertently and we don't, we're not even intending to squash our children down, but it happens. It happens because hurt people hurt people and hurt people are afraid people. And people who are afraid will often project their fears and insecurities and lack and limitation and that inner gunk onto someone that they're in charge of, someone that they have stewardship over. So it's not that we do it on purpose and we're not trying to be evil human beings most of the time. Often we're just acting and projecting from a place of trauma and wounding and insecurity and fear and lack and limitation, all those things that we carry around. So it's vital that we all get after doing our inner work. Um, sovereignty is about letting this stuff go to the degree that you can stand up more and more and more in your own inner personal power, establish those healthy boundaries and move forward in the direction of your truth, your purpose, and your, pa your passion so that you can do what you came here to do. It's it's almost like allowing for the false you, the conditioned you, to die off and to let go and to release what isn't you anymore. Okay. Now, I want you to get out the, th the three blank pieces of paper. And at the top of each of those papers, I want you to write, did we already do this? Relationship on one, um, dreams, purpose, passion on another, trauma and physical illness or body 
on the third. And then to, right now, I'm going to see if we can devote maybe 15 minutes to each of these three categories. Hopefully there will be time to do that. If there isn't time to do that, you're going to be able to come back, watch the replay and apply these principles of healing to um, each of the different sections. So for right now, oh, here it is. I want you to do this. So we're going to focus on relationships first. And at the top of your paper, write relationships and then separate it into three columns. The first column is going to say bondage, meaning you're going to identify what is keeping you stuck, what is holding you back, what are the triggers, what's going on in that specific relationship that's keeping you stuck. The, the middle column, you're going to write down, okay, what's coming up about that? What emerges? What's coming up around all of that? Is there emotion? Are there beliefs? If there are, why is that important to you? What is the emotion that's playing into that? And then on the last column, I want you to write down, did I let this go? question mark, because we're going to put a check mark there if we feel like it's been cleared and released. So that's the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into emotion or relationships first. I want you to think about all the relationships you've ever had in your life, starting with parents. So let's write down mother. So that's what I would do in this column is I would write down mom dad. And you don't have to do them close together. I mean, you can give yourself some space because you're probably going to be writing stuff down, but let's brainstorm all of the relationships in your life that you've ever had that maybe there still feels like there's some baggage or there's some stuckness or there's some disconnect or it's not super deep. It's not super close. Um, there's healing or wounding. I would venture to say every relationship you've ever had has things to remind you about inside of you of inner work that you need to do because that's what relationships are for. They're to help mirror and reflect back to you what's going on inside of you. It's not really even about them. It's all about you. Okay. Um, Mom, dad, siblings, write down, list out all of the sibling relationships. And you can do this process for each one. Today, we're going to just focus on one. So I'm going to give you a minute to just write down some of the relationships. Um, maybe even romantic relationships, loving relationships, friendships. And as you look into these relationships, you might even ask yourself, why did I allow X, Y, Z to go on for so long? Why did I go in that direction for so long before saying something, before standing up, before speaking out? Why did I give in to get along? Why did I allow that? Was I placating and bending my free will and my sovereignty and my happiness in order for everybody else's happiness, parents, mothers specifically, <laughs> was I putting my happiness on the back burner so that everybody else's happiness could be seen and acknowledged and taken care of? And then I go without and then feel like the martyr. Have we done that in our lives? Did I go in a specific direction in the relationship out of obligation or pressure or um, placating to other people's expectations or um, uh, serving them so that they would like you or approve of you or accept you, right? Sometimes we, we see this in son father-son relationship. The son will go out into the world and prove to the whole world that he's good enough so that his dad will finally accept him or his mom. But sometimes that happens with father-son wounding. Mother-daughter does it too, and, and vice versa. <clears throat> 
So where in any of these relationships did you give in to get along? Where did you, in what ways did you, were you trained to lose yourself? In what ways were you trained to buy into the I'm not enough or the insecurities? So as you've written a list, a general list of relationships now and that first column, um, you may have like 20 or 30 names, specific individual names that go down this first column. I want you to pick one. Pick the one that you feel most drawn to. Pick the one that calls your attention. Boom, right now in this moment. And that might be mother, father, spouse, child, sibling, whoever it is. And I want you to just start looking at the relationship and thinking about the relationship. And where is the disconnect in that relationship? How is that mirroring back to you a disconnect from yourself? The disconnect from I'm, an, I'm not enough. I mean, that's not a disconnect, but in what way is that relationship affirming to you that you're not enough somewhere, somehow? Um, <clears throat> did you give in to get along because you wanted to or because you felt a need? Did you do it? Did you go along with what was happening in the relationship? Did somebody kind of project their will onto you and you lost yourself in it? What insecurities came up? So now you're going to go to the middle column of your piece of paper. What is emerging for you? Is insecurity coming up? Are there any emotions coming up? Is there any lack, self-doubt, insecurity, uh, beliefs? What is the belief? They did this. So therefore, what? What about you? What did that do to you? Because they did X, Y, Z. What did that do to you? How did that create insecurity in you? Fear, emotion, belief. And just start writing it out. I want you to just pick one person. Use that whole column to write out what's bubbling up for you right now. Did they shame you? Did they wrong you? Did they harm you? Did they speak against you? Did they betray you? Did they belittle you? <clears throat> Did they cause you to second guess yourself? Did they project their fear onto you? And what does that bring up in you? What's coming up inside of you right now? Are there fears, insecurities, emotions, beliefs? I'm not enough because X, Y, Z happened. Write it out. Take a bunch of time to write out that third column. And also I would recommend, you know, I in for the first column I put here bondage. In what way... Did this relationship remind you of a bondage that's coming up for you? Something that you're clinging to, something that you need to let go of, something that you need to resolve in you. That's what I mean by bondage. It, this is all on you, right? All of the onus is on you because you created what's coming up inside. They may have pushed your buttons, but you created the buttons. So this is on you right now. It doesn't really have much to do with them, although they did create an opportunity for you to recognize and heal something inside of you. So in some of these relationships, did you ever hear things like, I'm the boss of you, especially parent relationships? I've said this to my kids just jokingly, but I've said it and I don't say it anymore, but I used to say to my kids, hey, pick up your socks. I'm the boss of you. And I would just say it to kid around, but you know, that's not a, that is not a healthy thing to project onto another human being because you're not the boss of anybody but yourself. <clears throat> so I don't say that anymore. 
unless I'm really just kidding, right? But in what ways have relationships projected ownership onto you? You're mine. You are my child. You live under this roof. You will do as I say. You are my spouse. You live in this marriage. You will do as I say. Right? Has there been any of that kind of um, restriction and lack of freedom or stepping on your freedom? And sometimes it's it's not even that bold. Sometimes it's very covert. Like sometimes it'll just show up as... Um, um, like subtle manipulations. I can't think of any right now because I don't know. I don't, I don't do that. And I don't hear that much in my life anymore. Um, <clears throat> so, but sometimes it'll be subtle, guilt ridden, manipulative to try to get to sway you in a certain direction. So look at where is the bondage in your relationship and what is emerging for you about that. Okay. Now, hopefully you've had a chance to get in touch with some of that stuff and you've written some of it out and journaled it out a little bit. I'm going to move on. If you're watching the replay, pause it until you feel like that's complete for you. But um, at this point, I want you to stop trying to figure it out. At this point, I want you to just sit in it. Maybe there's a memory that comes up. Maybe there's... Um, uh, a situation that it reminds you of. And so as you are just being present, I'm going to invite you to get into your body. I'm going to invite you to just put your awareness within. Go inside. Go into your center and just sit in your body for a minute with these feelings that are bubbling up. These physical physiological, biological feelings, chemicals, and things that are coming up inside of you, I want you to just sit in it and notice it, recognize it. As you think about this one relationship, what do you feel in your body and where do you feel it? You can close your eyes and just get in tune. Put your awareness all the way to the base of the spine. And notice, is there tension in your body? Do your shoulders feel tight? Do your eyeballs feel tight? Does your throat feel tight? Is there restriction or constriction anywhere coming up? Do you feel um, a heaviness maybe in your gut? What is coming up for you? What is emerging? And if you can really feel what your body is showing you in the form of tension, heavy energy, just a dense feeling, maybe there's pain. Maybe you actually have some symptoms, physical symptoms. I just want you to pay attention to your body right now. Get in touch with all of it. Drop down into your center. And breathe, breathe into it. I'm going to ask you to just put an imaginary line <clears throat> in the center of your body from the top of your head to the base of the spine. That line can be like a beam of light. So I want you to focus on that beam of light in the center of your body. And I want you to think about this relationship, think about the bondage. And as you do, Push those buttons. <clears throat> See if you can really light it up like a Christmas tree. Feel that coming up in your body. Notice where you feel it. Notice how heavy it is. In fact, could you <clears throat> write down on your piece of paper what part of the body are you feeling it? Uh, Anne says, very powerful and in-depth. So true. It's not about others. They are only here to teach us. Yes, they are here to teach us for sure. What do you feel in your body and where do you feel it around this relationship and the memories and the emotions and the beliefs and all the stuff that's stirring around right now in your body? If you're willing, could you drop it into the chat box so that I can help guide you and help facilitate the healing? 
Okay, so here we go. We've got digestive system. Is this upper gut or lower gut? So I'm going to use, um, those of you who don't know, I have a chakra chart that I've put together. If you want any of these charts that we're going to use today, they're just great basic body reading charts to help you understand what your body is saying to you. If you want these, it's it's 50 bucks for um, these three charts, but also others that I usually mail out in a packet. Um, let me know if you're interested in that and I'll post the link down below. So we've got stomach, someone's feeling nauseous. Okay, so let's go to the chakra chart. We'll use this one. I think this one's a, a great one to start with. So we've got your stomach is the power center. This is the upper gut. It's about personal power. It's about um, boundaries. It's about sovereignty. It's about... Um, establishing healthy boundaries and letting people know and communicating with people and saying, hey, that doesn't work for me or um, um, whatever it is, right? Th that's what it's about. Um, so the solar plexus is about your personal power, social identity, um, authority, self-control, energy, setting up proper boundaries and taking action. That's where vitality is stored, is in your upper gut personal power. Lower gut, that is sacral chakra. It's this orange one right here. And that has to do with creativity, sexuality, sensuality, feeling all the senses, desires, dreams, goals, passions, pleasure, nature, creativity, and family. Also stored emotions. So I want you to just be thinking about that for a moment. We've also got the root chakra, upper gut, upper gut, power center, digestive system, heaviness in the upper gut, tears surfacing. Yeah, because where has your personal power been stepped on? Who stepped on your personal power and your free will and your sovereignty? Who did that in your life? Um, yes, I will post the site um, to order my charts. see. I'm trying to think which, where it is. If you just go to janetthurgood.com, I will also post this um, on the replay in the description of the YouTube video, but you can also go to janetthurgood.com forward slash chart, I believe is what it is. I hope that's right. Um, I'll have to double check that before we, before I let you guys go. If that doesn't work, reach out to me on social media and let me know that you want to order the charts and I will get them sent to you. All right. Um, the root chakra has to do with safety, stability, security, foundation. So, um, full acceptance of life on earth, survival, power to achieve your goals, feeling grounded, stillness, courage, familiarity, instincts, basic human needs. That is root chakra. Mm. Somebody also had sent me earlier, and I'm going to share it without sharing name. Somebody had, oh, no, you know, we're going to do that when we get to the body. Sorry. All right. Um, lower gut, root chakra, heaviness in the upper gut, tears coming up. All right. Thanks for sharing all of that. So how have these relationships affected your personal power? I don't want you to answer that question. I want you to just feel it. And can you give it a number? So you've identified it's in the upper gut. Isn't it interesting that most of these relationship issues are coming up on the level of family, which is the sacral chakra and your sternum, which is your power center? It's interesting to me that most times when you have relationship gunk coming up to the surface, it has everything to do with sovereignty and autonomy and you standing sovereign as the queen or king of your own kingdom. So just notice it. Give it a number. If 10 is the worst, what number would you give that energy that you're feeling in your body right now? Breathe into it. 
Stop trying to figure it out. You don't have to figure it out. I just want you to feel it in your body. Yeah. Karen says being rejected by my son. Okay. So just notice that. Notice the rejection. Notice where it lives in your body. We're not going to figure this out. We're not going to go deep into talk therapy. We're just going to go into your physical body. And I want you to just feel it. Sit with that feeling. Let's put our awareness now deeper into the body and let's go all the way to the base of the spine. I'm going to invite you to put an imaginary crystal, like a stone at the base of the spine and breathe into that. Just pretend. Use your imagination. Breathe right into that at the base of the spine. And as you breathe into that stone at the base of the spine, I want you to envision it being illuminated with light on every breath to the degree that your light goes out in every direction, above you, below you, in front of you, behind you. Your entire center now gets lit up with this luminous, radiant, beautiful, golden white light. I want you to feel that feeling of the expansion of this light at the base of your spine. We're just going to surrender control. We're not trying to figure anything out. We're just feeling our bodies. Feel your body. And as you're feeling the effects of these emotions and beliefs and rejection, right, and lack of sovereignty, as you're feeling the effects of all of that, I really want you to get in touch with where you feel it. Breathe into it. Breathe into the base of the spine. Drop your shoulders on the exhale and just let go. What is trying to come up for you? For Karen, it, it is the feeling or the energy of rejection. I feel rejected. I feel rejected. How does that make you feel, Karen? What is the emotion underneath that? So maybe there's some deep sadness. Maybe there's some anger. So go into that. And I want you to say it out loud. I feel anger or I feel sadness. Go into that and feel it. Surrender control. Let your body feel the feeling. If there's a belief bubbling up, like I'm not enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not safe, I'm not lovable, I'm not seen, I'm not heard, I'm not valued, worthless. There we go. There's the belief. I feel worthless because I was rejected. That's the belief. Now, that belief might have been true for you years ago, but let's check back in with our body and see if that belief is serving you anymore. Is it healthy for you to carry around that belief? Or would it be all right to let that go. Michelle says, insignificant, feeling insignificant. So I'm going to ask you as you feel that, I feel insignificant. What's the other feeling underneath all of that? And where are you feeling it in your body? Is it in your heart? Is it in your gut? Is it in your ribs? Where is that feeling? And let's go deeper. What's underneath that? Is there some sadness? Is there some anger? Is there some... I'm not enoughs. And if there is, what's the feeling under that? Typically, it's going to take you to a place of either intense anger or deep sadness or both. Usually, that's at the root once you go all the way in. I feel worthless. I feel insignificant. I feel unseen. I feel stepped on. I feel unvalued devalued, belittled, sadness. There you go. There you go. Feel the sadness. Go into your body deeply and breathe into the sadness and feel it. And write down on your paper next to sadness, give it a number. How heavy is that? How heavy is the sadness? Ooh, that's pretty heavy. I'm feeling all of that. It's a 10. Yeah, that's heavy. 
So put your awareness at the base of the spine, breathe into that imaginary crystal stone that I just had you place at the base of your spine, breathe into that, breathe right into it and drop your shoulders on the exhale. Just let go a little more. Long, slow exhale, breathe in deep. I want you to breathe light into your bones. And on the exhale, just let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. Breathe light into your bones and into your cells. On the exhale, drop your shoulders. Relax in your neck and your tongue, way, way, way back in the into the swallowing muscles. Can you relax that? Soften the muscles that are holding your eyes in. Soften your mouth, your throat, your tongue, your jaw. Drop your shoulders. Keep your attention in that crystal at the base of the spine. Do not leave the base of the spine. So if you can keep your awareness inside your body, drop down to the root chakra at the base of the spine, I would love that. I invite that. Please keep your awareness there. And let's get the body to process this, not your brain. So I want you to drop down out of your head, out of your thinking. Drop down deep, deep, deep into your body. Put your attention there. But when you breathe in, I want you to breathe in light, love, truth, your higher self. Call your higher self into your bones, into your cells, into every single tiny little atom and molecule in your body. Breathe the light, the presence, the essence of you in. So just call it in. And I want you to say, I am and breathe it in. On the exhale, drop your shoulders and just let go of what is bubbling up, what is emerging, the sadness, that deep wounding. Breathe into it. Feel it. Stay with that feeling as long as you possibly can. If you stay with the feeling of sadness or whatever's coming up for you, maybe it's just heaviness or fear or anxiety. Whatever's coming up in the moment in your body, stay with that feeling, but breathe into the base of the spine. We're trying to get the body to process this so your brain doesn't have to because your brain's not capable anyways, right? Your body can process 40 million bits of information per second. Your brain can only do about 40. So when you ask your head to think this through and figure it out, and come to a conclusion and judge the hell out of it and judge the heck out of you, then it's like asking your brain to run windows and process all of this processing that has to take place. Your brain's not capable. So please drop out of your head, drop down into your body. Put an imaginary brain or lungs at the base of your spine in that crystal stone Put the breathing mechanism and the thinking mechanism down in your body deeply and let your body process this for you. You don't need to figure it out. You don't, need to, you don't even need to answer all the questions. Why did that happen? Why did I do it? Why didn't I stand up? Why didn't I? Are you angry with yourself that you didn't do X, Y, or Z or that you didn't stand up for yourself or speak your truth? Just feel the feelings. Don't try to figure it out. So again, dropping back down into your body. Now, we're going to do a series of breathing, some breath work, just to kind of jet the pipes and move that stuff along. I like to do fire breathing. So we're going to do 10 fire breaths. Um, these ones are a little bit different than the ones that I have taught you guys in the past. So I want you to just, Karen says, failed as a parent. Good. Good. Failed as a parent. There's the belief. Where's the emotion in your body about that? What, where do you feel that? And what do you feel and how much? And now we're going to let the body process that. 
we're going to do 15 rounds of fire breaths and they go pretty quickly. We're just going to do it only in and out through the nose. Okay. So putting your awareness at the base of the spine, 15 fire breaths. Here we go. I feel like I personally need to do about 10 to 15 more. So I'm going to do another set. Here we go. Okay, big breath in, big breath out. Breathing into the base of the spine, putting your awareness at the base of the spine. Drop your shoulders on the exhale. Woo! Everybody just give a big sigh of relief and let that out with sound. Let your body produce some sound. You can either growl it out or woo! Ooh, and just go down in your body. Again, we're letting your body process the energy. That's what we're letting the body do. So you don't have to talk about it. You don't have to analyze it. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to go back in time. You don't even need to know how many generations back it goes or what part of your, your wounded inner child is speaking. It doesn't matter. Just let your body process it. Notice what's coming up, what's emerging. Don't answer the question. Just sit in your body, be with it, sink into your feelings. Sit with those feelings as long as you possibly can. You'll notice that if you stay with the feeling for as long as you can, the feeling will dissipate. It'll root itself out and it'll dissipate. But get yourself rooted, grounded, stable. You can either go into your heart and put your awareness there or go into the base of the spine at that crystal that I taught you to put there and breathe into that. Put your awareness there. Put your lungs there. Put your brain there. Breathe into it. Breathe out. Let go. Let's do some tapping on the heart. If you felt the emotions coming up in the sternum, you can actually press in on the sternum right here. Just press down on your upper gut. And as you press down on your upper gut, and allow those muscles to surrender and release and relax with the breath. Breathe in, breathe out, drop your shoulders. Let the abdomen relax and soften. If you're feeling it in the throat, one of the best ways is to smile really big. Pull these muscles all up towards your ears. Smile as big and huge as you can. Hold that smile for 10 counts. And then breathe and soften and let it go and drop your shoulders on the exhale. Keep your awareness at the base of the spine. Do not leave the base of the spine. Keep processing. Good. Now we're going to do a round of two pointing. Two pointing. My teachers taught me that the distance between two points is suffering. So here's where you are. Here's where you want to be. And the gap in between represents suffering. So here's where I am. Find a point on your body. Touch it only with the middle finger, your fire finger. Don't let any other finger touch. I just want you to use your fire finger. Find another point on your body. That's point B. This A represents where I am now in my life. B represents where I want to be, which is freedom, liberated from bondage, inner peace of mind and heart and soul. Notice the gap between the two and breathe into that space. Expand that space. Keep a portion of your awareness at the base of the spine, breathing into that crystal, but just be aware of this gap, the weird space between these two dots. Now, when you're ready, drop your hands 
down into your lap and let point A and point B in your mind morph and become one single speck, either inside you or in front of you. As soon as those two points become one, just go, boof, drop it, drop it, release it, let it go. Let it go, let it go. Okay, just drop it. And as you drop it and it goes down and like you drop a stone into a pool of water and that ripples out, I want you to remember to go down into your body to the base of the spine and breathe into that space again. Looking for relaxation, dropping your shoulders, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go. Let's do one more round of two pointing. Find point A and point B. Don't overthink it. It doesn't matter where the points are. Just find them. Notice the gap. Keep a part of your awareness at the base of the spine, always rooted, grounded, stable. <clears throat> Notice the gap, notice the gap, notice the suffering. Why aren't you where you want to be? Why don't you have sovereignty and autonomy? Why are you in bondage? Okay, now when you're ready, bring the two points together and create one single speck in front of you or inside of you. When you're ready, drop it down to the base of the spine. Let it ripple out. Let it go. Breathe. Breathe in, breathe out, let go. Shauna says it feels so good to press down below the belly button. Yes. So you can even, you know, how I had you up in the sternum area, you can even go down deeper into the gut, down towards the belly button and below the belly button, pressing on those spots to just release. Anywhere where your body's storing tension, that's a place where you're storing data unresolved data from the pains of the past, whatever it is that you're holding on to a false version of yourself that you're choosing not to let go of. Okay. I spent all our time on relationship, but hopefully you were able to let something go. If you didn't completely let that go and it's not to a zero yet, some of you had, it was at a 10 if it is not at a zero yet, keep doing the breath work, keep doing the releasing, keep dropping your shoulders, keep letting go and softening your body. Karen says she feels better. Good. Do you feel lighter? You can tell if you've released and let go because you'll feel lighter. You'll probably start yawning. Yes, she feels lighter. Good. Okay. I want you to do this same thing for um, the body. So we're going to, we're going to put up at the top body or trauma. You can write down a trauma or a memory that's coming up for you. And we're going to do the same thing. This is going to be a little bit more difficult because some of you don't have these and you don't have resources to help you identify, um, what's going on. Um, Somebody reached out to me before the class and said they had been dealing with fibroid tumors and that it had followed their family line. So anything that follows your family line, the very first thing that I'm going to look at if I'm working with you one-on-one -on -one in a healing session is we're probably going to do some casting out of curses. So curses have a tendency to follow family lines. I know someone who has, um, like in their family, the males and all the males in the family usually die of heart-related incidences before the age of 60. And, it, and it's uncanny how many people this problem has hunted down. Okay. Can't find the charts at my site. Yeah. Um, Bev, reach out to me on social media, go to Janet Thurgood, or you can go into um, Greater Life, Greater Impact, into my Facebook group, Greater Life, Greater Impact, and um, just send me a message in there that says, hey, I want your chart. 
Um, those of you who want the charts, <clears throat> you can type, just send me a direct message that's private in here in this, in this group right now. Send me your, um, maybe just your phone number and I'll text you. Does that sound good? Send me your phone number. I'll text you. And then we can, I can send these in the mail to you <clears throat> because I'm, I don't know if that site is up and running at the moment, but I will, I will get that for those of you guys who are watching the replay on YouTube. I'll try to have that link ready for you um, so that you can order these. So, but let's look at uterine fibroids. Let's just look at the uterus for a minute. The uterus is in the sacral chakra right there, which is all about um, creativity, primal feelings, sexuality, sensuality, uh, family, emotions. So it has to do with, um, you know, if it's in the uterus, has to do with femininity, how you see yourself as a woman and how other people see you as a woman, how they value your, your divine feminine role. Is that being stepped on by dominant men? Has that been stepped on by dominant men following the generations of your mothers and grandmothers? Was there a rejection of the divine feminine in some way? Were the men and the women equally yoked in your family line? Or were the men more dominant than the women? And is there rage in the womb about that? <clears throat> so fibroids or tumors have to do with rage. Okay. Oh, we got people wanting charts. Awesome. Okay. So the charts are there. Actually, it's not 50 bucks. It's $47 for me to mail you the charts, but um, <clears throat> I add on three bucks so that I can ship it to you because it costs me some money to send them out. So that's why I, that's why it's 50 bucks. Okay. Um, and you can send the $50 to my website, which is janetthurgood.com. Um, just go to janetthurgood.com and there's a donate button on my website. So if you hit that donate button, you can enter in the amount that you want. Um, there's a suggested price in there for my healing sessions that I do with people, but there's also a place where you can edit that information, just put in $50 and I'll send these to you in the mail. Okay. Um, fibroids have to do with bitterness and anger and um, what was the word I used? Rage. Okay. So that's what I would look at in your physical body and just start looking at what's coming up for you around these fibroid tumors in the womb. So the womb has to do with feminine creativity, the divine feminine, your role as a woman it has to do with the injustice that's been perpetuated onto women. So was there oppression in your family? Is there a belief in that oppression in your family? So kind of look at, were you rejected? Were you abandoned? Um, was there miscarriage that happened in the womb? And are you still upset about that or enraged about that? Are there generational beliefs that have followed your family line around women and femininity and womanhood and masculinity and all of those things? You can also look at, is there guilt and shame that comes up around your own sexuality and femininity and creativity? And your emotions. Is there guilt? Is there shame? Is there confusion? Is there rage? Was father? So you also look at, you know, when we're dealing with stuff in the womb and especially fibroids tissues, that bitterness tissue, um, when masculine energy is out of balance in your body, it turns to rage. So was there an angry father or an angry patriarchy that caused oppression? in your life? Or did you see that happen somewhere? So those are things that I would ask. Um, those are ways that the body can communicate with you. So now those of you who want to understand in this class, you want to understand what your body's saying to you and about you drop some of your body issues. Yeah. Yeah. That, 
the the janetthurga.com forward slash um charts did not work. So don't use that. I will I'll give you the, the right link in the description later on. Mm. Would love the chart and package, but will be out of town through the month of August. I will purchase them in September. Thank you. All right. Awesome. All right. I will come back here and I will write down your phone numbers. I will send you guys a text and um, we'll get in touch. Um, so for now, what I want you guys to do is I just want you to drop into the chat. Anyone in here who's wanting to understand a certain region or part of the body better um, maybe even a symptom of your body. We did just do fibroid tumors in the, in the uterus. What have you got going on? Or do you want to share? Do you have uh, a pain in your left big toe that you'd like to know about? Is there something going on in your shoulder? Is there something going on? Um, you know, when we had stuff come up about relationships and you guys were processing, did stuff come up in the heart? Were you feeling things flowing through the body in any way, shape, or form. So I just want to know about that. So that's helping you to trigger the gunk. So now that you've triggered this rage in the womb, I want you to think about what does that look like and how does that apply to you in your life? And then sink into the emotions and the feelings and the what what's emerging biologically in your body and then just get back in go through that process of releasing clearing letting go and see if you can heal that and you may have to do it over and over and over and you may have to go watch the replay of this video so that you can go back and do the healing and releasing okay so we've got um generational stuff with chronic autoimmune illness i need you to be a little bit more specific around autoimmune illness. So autoimmune illness usually has to do with self-rejection, a lack of self-love. Who stepped on, who broke your heart, who broke your spirit to cause you to reject yourself and hate yourself and put yourself way, way, way on the back burner in order for everybody else's needs to be met, but not yours. That's what I would look at. And as you do that and get in touch with that, what comes up in your body? What do you notice that you can release and let go of? Go back through the healing process and do that. Um, Lisa said, left side nerves to feet are affected. Left side nerves to the, to the feet. So the left side of the body on your feet, 31, 32, 33. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this chart first. Um, thinking that power is from controlling. So feeling like you got to control the universe to get your life to play out the way you think it should. Um, your heart might be closed off to love. There may be bitterness coming up. That would be big toe. So lost. Um, let me see. Let me look at this one. The feet have to do with moving forward. So if the nerves in your, in your feet, so the nervous system is what carries emotion, right? Um, so if the nerves in your feet are carrying unprocessed, heavy, gunky emotion about moving forward, I would ask, what's going on in your life that's causing you to not be able to move forward in your spiritual journey? Because the left side is the feminine side, and that has to do with your spiritual journey, moving forward on a spiritual path. So who is, who or what is preventing you from moving forward on your spiritual journey? I would ask that question. Um, the feet have to do with fear. I can't move forward. Um, here, and on this chart, we could look deep at the feet too, depending on where in the feet this shows up for you. Um, feet are about not liking the direction that you're going, fear of stepping into the future, um, Depression, grief, sadness, powerlessness, out of control, seeking to control. So your feet about your feet are about um, trying to control. And then we can also look at the root chakra when it comes to feet because the root chakra governs everything from the base of your spine all the way down your legs and into your feet. So we've got issues around not feeling safe. Um, 
this the root chakra is about survival and stepping out in into life um full acceptance of life on earth being being rooted stable grounded walking your path so as you bring that stuff up and you look at okay what's emerging around all of that what's coming up for me what's bubbling up to the surface look into your body just sit with your body and sink into the feeling go to the base of the spine Breathe into that and just continue to purge and release and let go. Use the breath to help you. Use the two-pointing to help you. Use the fire breathing to help you. You can write down the number on a scale from zero to 10. What's the most? Okay. All right. We're going to go. Holy cow. We have a lot of people's issues coming up. Unhealthy blood and red blood cells. Okay. Blood has to do with your root chakra. Again, we can use this chart to get to identify. Um, if the root chakra is out of balance, you may feel unsettled, alone, unsafe, worried, fearful, stuck, unstable, like you don't fit in somewhere. You can't let things go and you're rigid and often um, hoard clutter because you don't feel safe. So some possible causes for imbalance in the root chakra is a traumatic birth. Stress, trauma early in life, separation from parent or home, child abuse, homelessness, job loss, divorce, rape, malnutrition, illness, loss of a loved one. So those are some possible causes of imbalance or problem coming up in the root. The root is what governs the blood. It's about feeling safe. We can actually even go deeper if there's, I don't even know if there's time. Um, Cause I want to give time to some of these other people. If I don't get to you in this session, schedule a body audit with me. I will give you guys the link um, for that. In fact, you know what? Let me just see if I can go grab it right now. Here it is. Sorry. Give me just one second. I'm, I'm going to grab you the link to the um, to schedule a body audit with me, so that you can, so we can go deeper. Um, and I again, I'll put this on the replay, so that those of you guys who are watching later, you'll be able to have access to it too. Um, here we go. HTTPS JanetThurgood.com forward slash chart is what it is. And I'm going to drop it into the chat box down below so you guys can grab that and go find it there. That's actually where you can order the charts, but if you don't want to order it there, you can reach out to me and I'll just get in touch with you. Okay. We've got hemorrhoids autoimmune. We did feet hemorrhoids. Again, it's another base of the spine issue. In fact, I'm just going to see if we can go just a little bit deeper on this one. H. Mm, nope. Sorry. E, F, G, H. Let's look up hemorrhoids and see what comes up for you. Gosh, I'm having a hard time finding it. Here we go. What will it take for me to let things go easily? So it's about what you're holding on to and you're holding it at the base of the spine around something that's causing you to not feel safe about life. So hemorrhoids, what am I holding on to that I can't let go of? And if this is around relationships, who or what am I holding on to that I can't let go of? Usually it's control. Where in my relationship do I need to surrender control? Okay, another one is... What outdated concepts um, am I still holding on to around hemorrhoids? 
What value is there in predicting that I'm going to be rejected and that, and that it's not safe for me in this relationship? I'm not safe in any relationship. It's not safe to be loved. Okay, we've got another one. Nerves affected in the neck and the hands. All right, well, let's go to our charts. Let's go to the neck. We could go to the back of the neck. Is it in the back of the neck or on either side of the neck? Could you be more specific on that one, Michelle, if you're willing to? Um, the neck has to do with separation from higher self. Both sides of the neck. Okay, separation from higher self, separation from higher self, um, blaming self, self-guilt. So you think about, you know, when you're stiff necked, when you have a stiff neck, it's usually because you're unwilling to, to be flexible and it's unwilling to support yourself, your own identity. Let's go to the emotional chart and see what's there around neck. Um, the upper spine has to do with blame, bitterness, um, Neck, stubborn, inflexible, separation from higher self. Again, and the neck is, um, I mean, that's kind of between these two chakras, between the heart center and your truth center. So I would kind of ask, what's going on around the laws of love? Who do I need to forgive? And where do I need to speak my truth? Because the jaw, the mouth, the neck, that's all about truth. It's about free will. So you can ask, who's stepping all over your free will? Who's stepping on your free will? And how is that causing you to be um, disconnected from your higher self? Okay, we've got a few more here. Lower back arthritis in the neck and spine. Lower back is about support. And lower back has to do with emotions. Feel Again, we're dealing with the root chakra. There's a lot of root chakra issues in the world right now because people don't feel safe. They feel afraid. They're afraid for their future. They're afraid to step out. They're afraid. Um, they're afraid of what's coming. They're afraid about survival. So there's a lot of root chakra issues in the world right now. It's about safety, stability, grounding, feeling stable, feeling uh, like you, um, you can fully and completely accept your life the way that it is on the earth. It's about survival. So lower back arthritis in the neck and spine. So... Again, arthritis is another form of bondage. And when I hear the word arthritis and I think about bondage, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast out <clears throat> because that's what <clears throat> dark energies, dark entities do is they, they, they bond you. They hide in usually in the neck. They will hide in the spine um, and they will bind those things up. To, to the degree that they cause stiffness and pain and even in your hands, right? So arthritis, cast it out, cast out that spirit of bondage or whatever the spirit is. Maybe there's a spirit of, I don't feel safe. I don't feel supported. The neck has to do also with, again, we're going to go to this chart the throat chakra and the heart chakra. So throat chakra is all about speaking your truth, free creative self-expression, integrity, confidence, wisdom, speaking up for yourself, independence, choices, free will. And then you come down into the heart center, which is that encompasses part of the lower part. Um, it's about perfect love. It's about forgiveness. It's about beliefs, attitudes, and values. So, and then you can look on the back here for 
um, ways that you can be imbalanced and, and how to discern if there's an imbalance in those energy centers and what maybe ha- would have caused that. And the remedy is still the same. Get into your body. Sit down in those feelings for a moment. Feel the feelings. Notice what you feel, where you feel it, and then choose to release it. Go through that process of releasing. Skin issues. Again, so skin has to do, we can go to this chart. This is a really great chart. It helps to see what governs the skin. And skin falls under the the, oh, what's the word? The, what governs the skin is the heart center. It's the heart chakra. So in regards to skin, you want to look at perfect love, non-limited love, unconditional love, harmony, forgiveness, healing, compassion, understanding, transformation, sincerity. So who do you need to forgive? Is it you? Is it another human? In fact, let's go through the forgiveness process since we've got a lot of heart energy coming up right now. I want you to think about that relationship that came up for you guys earlier. My hair keeps getting stuck on this mic. Um, Think about that relationship. And I want you to just say out loud, um, I bless, and then say their name. I bless Fred. I release him from my suffering. Or her. And I forgive Fred for projecting his pain onto me and making me feel bad. Because I choose. I chose to feel the feelings. I chose to buy in to the programming. I chose to go along to get along. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. And now I'm choosing something else. So I'm going to let this go and I forgive. Next. Get into your body, drop down to the base of the spine, breathe into that and say, I bless myself. Breathe in, breathe out, drop your shoulders. I release myself from all this suffering and just let it go. And I forgive myself for carrying it. Breathe in, breathe out, let that go. I bless myself. I bless all the witnesses. Drop down to the base of the spine. Put your awareness in your body. I release all the witnesses from my suffering. And I forgive unconditionally. Just breathe into that. Say it a few times if you have to until you can get into the shift, until you can feel the energy in your body start to dissipate or shift. That's when you know that you're shifting. Skin issues, losing blood. We we talked about blood again, root chakra. Skin is heart chakra. But just notice what is your body saying to you about that? What's going on in the heart? What is going on in my relationships around the matters of the heart? And who do I need to forgive? And, And where does that show up inside of me? And how can I release that and let it go? So if the conditions begin with an injury, It is the same as far as emotional conditions. Pretty much if there's an injury or a problem with your body, your body's going to attract situations that will call to you to get your attention. And if it doesn't get your attention with a sickness, it's going to up the ante until it finally gets your attention, until you have awareness on that body part because your body's trying to say something. It's saying, hey, you put this unresolved data here. Could you please return it to love so we can be free? Could you please let that go so we can be free? Because that's what this is all about. So yes, injuries, injuries can be um, your higher self is trying to get your attention. And so it will call in experiences, accidents, injuries, things that are out of your control, um, illness, stuff going on with the body. So learn to listen to your body, pay attention. What is my body saying to me and about me? If you don't know and you need some help, go ahead and schedule a body audit with me. You can do that by following the link that I just posted into the chat. Um, Hopefully everybody can see that. 
Have you seen that in someone, the curse, the darkness of the person energy? Have you seen that in someone? Um, I don't necessarily see it with my physical eyes, but it is one thing. It's a red flag that comes up for me every single time I hear someone say, hey, this situation has followed my family line. That's going to be a red flag for me. And I'm just going to naturally go, hey, we should probably cast this out. We should probably cast this energy out. And then we should, and then once we've done that, we can look at how has it attached to you and why? What are you carrying that you bought into that is yours? Maybe that wasn't projected onto you, but how did this energy resonate with you and why? So then we go looking for why is the onus of some of that on you and what can you do about it? So yeah, I don't I don't necessarily see it with my physical eyes, but it is uh, a red flag when I see generational stuff come up. Okay. It gets a big hammer. How do you know when you've cast out that it's truly gone? Is it just my will? Um so yeah, answer to that question, and then I will let you go because this has already gone over an hour. But um, how I know personally, if I've done some casting out, if I, I can tell when I've been effective because I can feel a shift in my body or in the person that I'm working on. So when I work with people, I can actually, because I'm very empathic and intuitive and I can feel a lot of those things coming up in the energy in your field. And so if I can feel that a shift has taken place either in me or in you as we're working together, that's that's how I know I'm satisfied with with how we did it. Sometimes I got to cast out two or three times in order or sometimes I got to go do a deep a deep cleanse. So I have a 10 minute long casting out process that I use personally when I'm working with people and sometimes I feel like, you know, I got to do a deep dive to cover all those bases. So one thing that you can do before you do any casting out, especially if the if the stuff's coming up in you and you feel like it's been put upon you by generational stuff, you can just raise your arm to the square and say, this is my body. This is my body. You reclaim this vessel. You let all energies, all entities, all intelligent energy around you and in your space know this is my space. I am the steward. I am the captain of this vessel. This is my body. You cannot be here. If it's the spirit of anxiety or fear or um, guilt, shame, rejection, bitterness, whatever it is that's coming up in you, you kind of have to call it out by its name. Spirit of guilt, spirit of shame, spirit of anxiety, spirit of fear, spirit of worry, whatever it is in you. So that's how I can tell is I will feel something feels different. I feel lighter. I feel better. Um, and then I go to work doing my own inner work. So if you want to be liberated from the bondage of what you're holding on to, it's on you. It doesn't mean that you're to blame for the prison that you're in. It doesn't mean that you caused all the trauma. That's not what it means. It just simply means you are responsible for what you're going to do with it now that it's in you. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with it? How are you going to move forward? Are you going to let that go? Okay, now we did talk about body. If you need more help with body reading, get the charts or get a body audit or get both. That's what I would do. Get both. Um, dreams and visions. Another way to trigger gunk inside of you and to know, hey, what's holding me back is to just step out in the directions of your dreams, your passion, and your purpose. And I guarantee you, you will find out almost immediately where you're stuck and what's holding you back and what's weighing you down. You're going to feel it come up in your body. What is it that you want the most? Where are you feeling a calling to go in the direction of your dreams, your purpose, and your passion? And why can't you have it? Are there beliefs around that? Is there a pattern coming up for you? Is there something that you 
just haven't been able to figure out or do? And is there something you can do about that? I worked with a gentleman just this past week. I'm not going to name any names, but I worked with a gentleman and um, he doesn't have a problem at all manifesting resources to help him on his journey. He knows what he wants. So he's identified what he wants. He doesn't have a problem manifesting the support, but once the support comes, it's like he pushes it away and then it just disappears and it's gone. And now he's left broke again. And he just keeps going through this cycle and this pattern of manifesting abundance and then being dead broke, manifesting abundance and being dead broke. And then he can't get traction uh, moving towards his dreams and manifesting that. So there was a pattern there. We had to go do some deep inner work to find out what, what are the beliefs around that? Why are you doing that? What from your past does that remind you of? Is there a pattern that you saw in your mother, in your father, in other relationships that hold you back and keep you stuck and cause you to not feel worthy or safe to receive so you can move forward? So we looked at that and he knew exactly what it was and it came up and we we found it in the body and cleared it out of his way. Okay. So hopefully this was helpful for you. The more of this inner work you do, go through mother and clear and release all that comes up around mother until your body feels light and fluffy. And then you can just project nothing but love out in there, out into the universe about mother. Do that for father. Do it for all the significant relationships you've ever had and I guarantee you, the more that you'd go through this process, the more you're going to clarify and what's a good word for it? You're going to clear and release and process and sanctify this vessel because you're going to be in the constant forward motion of letting stuff go that you've held on to for so long that it isn't serving you. And you don't have to talk about it. You just have to identify, where is this in my body? Where is it being stored on my hard drive? And what can I do now in this moment about it? If you got value out of this class today, please share it. Share the replay around with friends and family so they can get value as well. If you feel like you would like to go deeper and you would like some help in identifying what your body's saying to you and about you and have somebody hold space for you, <laughs> so that you can process through this and go a little bit deeper and get more clarity and get more freedom and more sovereignty in your life, then you can reach out to me. I'll provide a link for you where you can schedule um, a, a session with me. And uh, and that's what I do. That's what I love to do. That's my superpower is I'm very good at holding space for people like you who are on a spiritual journey, you know you want to get clear, you know you want to get purified, you know you want to let stuff go, you just don't know how to identify it, you don't know where to find it, and, and you don't know how to engage in the energy. That's what I do best. I help take you to the uncharted waters of who you really are so you can have healing and spiritual awakening and do your inner work and become more self-aware and develop that self-mastery so that you can live your purpose and your passion and your dreams in from a place of power um, and love. So if that's you, reach out to me and we'll get that scheduled as soon as we possibly can. All right. You guys have a great rest of your day and enjoy the replay. I hope you use it. Take notes, journal this out, figure it out. Don't figure it out, but sit in the emotions of it, feel it in your body, and then choose to let that go. All right. Take care, everybody. Love you. Mwah. Bye.